Hi folks, so now we're going to look at relative stability using a Nyquist plot. It's pretty powerful. Um, and what we'll do is, is do a little bit of work here on this page and then flip over to MATLAB and play around with an example. So, if you remember from Bode plots, the way that we would get um, phase margin is do something like find the gain crossover frequency of the magnitude plot and then migrate down to the phase plot and pick off the phase margin. Well, we can do a similar thing with the Nyquist plot, but of course it's all in one plot. So the gain crossover frequency is where the Nyquist plot crosses the unit circle. So we have to overlay the unit circle onto our Nyquist plot and find that point. And that's fine. And from that, you can get the phase margin. Um, the way this looks in a Nyquist plot is you just sort of draw a, a line from the origin of your Nyquist plot through the intersection of the Nyquist plot with the unit circle, and then pick it off from there. So here I've drawn just one part of the positive j omega axis uh, Nyquist plot. That's the red thing. And it's important that you use the positive j omega axis, by the way, otherwise it can get a little bit out of hand. And I have this unit circle in orange on there also. And then the dashed or dotted blue line is a line just from the origin of the, of the uh, j omega, or I'm sorry, the uh, complex plane, out to the intersection point of the unit circle and the Nyquist plot. And that gives us our phase margin. Now, to get it, we have to jump through a hoop or two. First off, we see that the phase associated with that intersection point is 210 degrees. Um, but I have to subtract off 180 to get my phase margin. So, if you have a Nyquist plot like this one, where the intersection is below the real axis, the darn thing is stable. So imagine that you increase the loop gain of your system and the Nyquist plot goes like that. That's the sort of thing increasing the loop gain does. It sort of distorts the Nyquist plot. Well now the um, intersection of the Nyquist plot with the unit circle is up there. So let's say, I don't know, 60 degrees um, or um, actually uh, so about 150 degrees and so you subtract 180 from that and now you have negative phase margin which would be a bad thing in terms of stability well assuming you want something stable okay so that's how you get the, um, the phase margin there's the the gain crossover frequency you could pull that off your Nyquist plot And when you have this very special case, if you were to fiddle around with the gain of your loop transfer function so that you get that, now you have the uh, Nyquist plot intersecting the unit circle on the, on the real axis, and that corresponds to having closed loop poles on the imaginary axis. Okay, so that's phase margin. Now on for gain margin. So there we would need the phase crossover frequency. And that's just the point where the Nyquist plot crosses the real axis. So in this little sketch, that would be this point right here. And, you know, just a moment ago, I drew that. And so here's a case where we have the gain crossover frequency equal to the phase crossover frequency. Which again, if you remember your Bode plot stuff, that is the case where you have poles on the imaginary axis. Now the gain margin is found with, again, a little bit of hoop jumping. And what you're doing is essentially finding this distance from the imaginary axis to this crossover um, point. So it's this little piece right here is indicative of our gain margin. Now interpreting what that means, you have to look at encirclements because it could mean that, you know, positive gain margin could mean that you can increase the loop gain by that amount before going unstable. Or it could mean that um, you need to increase the loop gain by that amount to make the system stable. 
So you just have to look at encirclements of your complete Nyquist plot to sort all that out. Okay, so here's a little sketch of what this means. Um, but we do have to, you know, flip some signs and, and do a little bit of, of shenanigans there. So you have to make it the negative 20 log 10. So let's say that we have this value of, of um, the real axis intersection point, negative 0.4. Then to get the gain margin, you would flip the sign of this in here and then flip the sign of the whole thing. So you end up with 8 dB of gain margin. Good stuff. Okay, so let's go to MATLAB now and do a similar example. Here is the transfer function we'll work with. And before we start looking at the Nyquist analysis, let's just do a quick Bode analysis on it. You can see here that we're very on the hairy edge of being um, having poles on the imaginary axis. We almost have this case of having the gain crossover and phase crossover frequency being equal. We have just a wee bit of phase margin, about 6 degrees, and just a little bit of gain margin. Now if I decrease the loop transfer function uh, gain a little bit, that'll bring the magnitude plot down and I'll get more uh, phase margin. Okay. So we'll set this aside now. And let's go like so. And I'll get rid of this. So here is our Nyquist plot. I'm going to control click on this and, well, I was going to put a grid on it, but let's not do that just yet. Instead, let's just zoom in a little bit. I could use the, um, the feature over here that allows us to zoom in. Control click over here and I could say zoom on negative one. Eh, okay. I kind of like my zoom a little better actually. So I'm going to go full view and do my zoom like so. All right. So here's our um, crossing with the, with the real axis. And I would need to put a unit circle on this thing. So I would need to have a circle that kind of goes, well, around the origin with radius 1. I don't really want to have to draw that, so fortunately MATLAB will do it for us. If I go in here and say characteristics, I can ask it to show us the stability margins. Whoop, and there we go with a nice little unit circle. It doesn't quite look like a circle because our axes aren't the same, but it also has these two blue dots on here. If I hover over this dot where we cross the uh, unit circle, it tells me all sorts of good things. Here we can see that the phase margin is 5.93 degrees, and it's at a frequency, a gain crossover frequency of 9.51. If I look over here at the um, Bode plot, that is exactly what it tells me. Phase margin 5.93 at 9.51. How cool is that? Now, if I back off from that dot a bit, you can see that it actually drew in this little line like I did in the, um, in the notes just a moment ago. Now, visually, what I can see from this is that we are on the very edge of instability. If this blue line moved up a little bit more, I'd be losing phase margin, and the darn thing would go unstable eventually. And similarly, this, this point would start moving towards that... Um, um, unit circle also, and then the two dots would lie on top of each other. Well, let's hover over this dot. So that's our gain margin, and it's 2.7. That's exactly what we see over in the Bode plot at the phase crossover frequency of 11.1. .1. How exciting. So um, let's, you know, let's just decrease the, the gain cross or the um, loop gain just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is shrink this down. I don't want to lose all of this wonderful stuff. And let's bring this up. As long as I don't make too many mistakes here. So 
So I'm going to go uh, figure 3, and how about we go margin g uh, divided by 2. So I'm going to decrease the uh, loop gain by, by a half, and we get this. So now we have more phase margin. Shrink it down a little bit. And let's do a figure 4. And Nyquist. Move this out of the way. Zoop, like so. And, oh, oh, there it is. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. stability margins on there. Now we can see that this angle is much larger and this point has moved away from this uh, negative one point. So that's the sort of thing that happens at least for this example but in a lot of cases as your phase margin increases as this point moves down and to the right on the unit circle this point moves closer to the origin and I get more and more gain margin. So it's just a different way of, inter of visualizing gain margin and phase margin than, that we had with the Bode plots. Okay, so that's about it. That's how you um, interrogate gain margin and phase margin, gain crossover, phase crossover with a Nyquist plot. Enjoy.